Welcome to the morning session. Um, yesterday we started the recap on understanding the human being and we had um, discussed a little bit regarding the needs of the human being and we said that the human being is a coexistence of two distinct entities, two distinct units. One is the self, which is the unit of consciousness, and one is the body, a material unit. And when we see the two separately or distinctly individually, then we can have the clarity of the two distinct units and know or come to see the differences in the needs, the activities, the responses of these two units. So we were discussing the needs yesterday and we may be able to see this very clearly within ourselves that I, as the self, have a need for happiness, which is continuous. There is no moment in the day when I want to be unhappy. I may be unhappy several times, but I don't want to be unhappy. This is a need in me, and it is a continuous need. It has to do with feelings. On the other hand, the body the requirement of the body is for physical facility in the form of food, in the form of clothes, in the form of shelter, and so on. And this is not a continuous need. You have to give it a break from time to time. You cannot do it continuously because the body does not need it also continuously. And we can also see that while the need of the self for feelings is it is something qualitative. You can't say that I have a little bit of um, I'm feeling a little bit happy and a little bit unhappy. You're either happy or you're unhappy at every moment. Of course, the next moment I may be unhappy. So if I'm not able to see that clearly, I may confuse it, but if I can try to see clearly within myself at any moment, either I am in harmony or I am in disharmony. I cannot be both. And of course, we may not be aware of it many times, but as we start paying attention, we will be able to see within ourselves when I am comfortable, when I am not comfortable when I am in harmony, when I am not in harmony, or when I am happy, when I am not happy. When it comes to the body's needs for physical facility, this can be something that can be quantified. So you can you know, decide how much food the body needs, and that's how you plan for the whole month. You bring a certain amount of grain, a certain amount of pulses or whatever you bring to the home to keep for the month or whatever. You are planning it according to uh, the need for the family or everybody who is part of the family. So, this is a quantitative need and we, if we pay attention, we can also see that this is a required in a limited quantity. So you can plan it. You can see that you need some quantity, limited quantity. Somebody might eat one or two chapatis, another person may eat four chapatis, but nobody can eat unlimited quantity of chapatis. So, we can plan accordingly and see that this is required in limited quantity. 
So all of this requirement of the body has to do with the physiochemical things. And this need of the body for physiochemical things can be fulfilled by physiochemical things. When it comes to the need of the self for you know, the feeling that is going to decide my happiness or unhappiness, then this need of the self is fulfilled by the right feeling within oneself. And to be able to have this right feeling within oneself and try to maintain it in continuity, one has to have the right understanding. Without that, this continuity of this feeling is difficult to maintain. And we can try and see it for ourselves. We don't have the completeness of right understanding as of now. And we are not able to maintain the right feeling within ourselves. So once we see the desirability of this, then we make effort towards it. Once we see that this is something that is desirable for me, then I can make effort towards ensuring this right understanding and right feeling within myself. So in this context, yesterday, when we were having this discussion, um, we had talked of an assignment to do all day yesterday to reflect on whenever we are doing various activities during the day to reflect on what our feeling is. Are we comfortable, happy doing those activities or are we unhappy doing those activities? Because as long as our focus is outside, we may be missing what is happening within and ultimately our experiences within, isn't it? And we want this continuity of happiness within. So if it is that important for us, why not pay attention to it? When we asked that question yesterday about what you would prefer between having or being happy or being in a wonderful situation outside or a wonderful location, most exotic, beautiful location. If you had a preference, suppose you can be unhappy in a beautiful location or you can be happy but without that location. And we could see the answers that we would prefer to be happy rather than to be in a wonderful location. But this is what we are doing. We are working on the outside most of the time and we are not paying attention within to our you know, whether we are happy or unhappy, doing many activities. So yesterday, um, we had discussed this and we were, uh, you know, we wanted to take your feedback on what you were able to observe, you know, in all the activities that, in the various activities that you did yesterday, were you able to notice whether you, are comfortable or uncomfortable inside while doing them. So we were saying that the need of the self for happiness, it can be fulfilled by the right understanding and right feeling within the self itself. The need of the body for physical facility is fulfilled by the physiochemical things. So this was one part one important point. Another important difference between the self and the body, that this imagination that is going on within me, the desires, the thoughts, the expectations, something or the other, we are feeling, we are thinking, we are expecting all the time. This is continuously going on within me. 
I may or may not be able to see it right now, but if we try to observe, we will notice that we are constantly thinking something, feeling something. In the case of the body, the activities are temporary that we have discussed many times. And the third, which is you know, the most important difference between the self and the body, that when it comes to the body, the body has a very definite conduct. It recognizes the relationship with other units <coughs> in a very definite manner and fulfills it in a very definite manner. So it will have a very definite type of conduct, very definite kind of behavior. And we took that example of the needle in the workshop. We take the example of the needle. That if a needle is uh, poked on the skin, now if the needle is sharper and harder than the skin, it will pierce the skin. If uh, So this you can notice also that if you do that, I mean, you don't have to pierce the skin, but I mean, one can see that a needle is easily able to pierce the skin. Now, this will always be the case in the case of the body. And uh, because this is, it is recognizing this sharper, harder object and it pierces the skin, this, it fulfills it in the same manner. In the case of the self, the conduct is not so definite. Why? Because our recognition and fulfillment is on the basis of knowing and assuming. So if my assuming assumption as in acceptance, so if I have a certain acceptance for something, then on the basis of that acceptance, my recognition and fulfillment goes in that direction. This acceptance may just be some random acceptance. Some, somebody said something to me, so I have accepted it. Something I read somewhere and I have accepted it over time. This has become a habitual pattern within me of accepting things in that line. Or this acceptance could be based on knowing or understanding. So, for instance, if I assume that becoming angry will get the job done, like we were taking that example, then my recognition and fulfillment is now on that basis. So, I assume that, or let us say, if I assume that I am separate, I am different from others, right? Everybody is different individuals. We are all separate individuals. We have, you know, every person has a different personality. So I see everybody as different from me. Now I have this acceptance within me that everybody is different. On this basis now, my recognition and fulfillment will become. So now, whenever I am thinking of, um, say if I have a, um, I want to, or I have this feeling that this person is separate from me, this person is different from me. Now, Whatever I go to do with this person, whenever I have to act with this person, or even before I act, how I think, all my thoughts will be on the basis of this acceptance, that this person is different, I am different. Now my recognition and fulfillment is according to that. So... I recognize that person also is different from me and my activities, my 
interaction with the other person is also in the same manner. If I see the similarity with the other person, if I have accepted that this other person is similar to me, now my recognition and fulfillment will be different. Because now I may be able to, or I will have this feeling of relationship with the other person. I will see my relatedness, the similarity. Now with that, all my thoughts will go in that direction of how to fulfill that relationship. So I may have thoughts of maybe I can greet him, maybe I can um, discuss things with him, maybe I can help him in some way. All my thoughts will be in that direction. Because I can see my relatedness, I have the feeling of relationship and my thoughts and activities flow in that direction. So my recognition and fulfillment is based on my acceptance. In the first case, when I had this acceptance or this assumption that the other person is very different from me, at that point, I could have, I uh, did not have this feeling of relatedness with the other person. So with that feeling of opposition, that feeling of being different, separate, now I may be having thoughts of going ahead of that person, trying to show myself to be better than that person. So my fulfillment, my recognition and fulfillment is being colored by my assumption. So this is a very important uh, difference between the self and the body. So you will be able to see that many a time we do many things based on our, on our acceptances. And we all our analysis, whatever analysis we do is also on the basis of that acceptance. So we justify many things in our thoughts based on that, on whatever our acceptance is. So just analyzing may not be sufficient trying to use logic, trying to use our thought process, trying to analyze things may not be sufficient. Because even the analysis will be colored by what is our feeling. And if we go to the feeling, even the feeling is colored by our acceptance. So ultimately, we have to reach to knowing or understanding so that our acceptances are in line with knowing, in line with our natural acceptance. Then our thoughts can come in that direction. Our feelings can come in that direction. Our thoughts can come in dire that direction. Expectations are according to that. And then our behavior can be definite. So right now what is happening is we are going by many assumptions isn't it? Without really knowing, without really having this right understanding. So whenever we assume something, that possibility of that assumption changing is there, isn't it? Today, somebody tells me something, I believe it to be true. I do it for some time. Tomorrow, somebody tells me something else. I change that assumption. Now my assumption has changed. Now my conduct has changed. Isn't it? We do this all the time. In our day-to-day -day activities also, we do this all the time. If you see simple things like um, somebody says, oats are very good for health. So we start eating oats. And we continue to eat oats for months and months. Then we hear in the news something that uh, it's good, but um, it may be difficult to digest. Better to use, um, uh, say, a variety of grains rather than just oats, because you will be missing so many things. Now I switch. Now I start having multigrain. Then I read somewhere that, you know, this multigrain is not a good choice because all the grains are mixed. You should eat grains that are good for uh, a particular season, not just randomly. 
so again i switch so we keep doing this kind of thing all the time not just for the health of the body but within ourselves also if i have accepted something without knowing then i go according to that assumption according to that acceptance and my behavior is a certain way for some time when that assumption changes my behavior also changes but when i can reach to knowing how will i reach to knowing keep referring to the natural acceptance when i keep referring to the natural acceptance i will be able to see whether my acceptances whatever i have assumed are they in line with my natural acceptance or not so on that basis my acceptances my assumptions can become definite i have the capacity to bring all of these assumptions in line with my natural acceptance and when i do that then i can have the feeling which is in line with my natural acceptance i can have thoughts in line with the natural acceptance i can have expectations in line with the natural acceptance and my behavior also is in line so now there is a possibility of definiteness in the feeling definiteness in the behavior also the conduct becomes definite that possibility is there within each and every one of us that potential is there we just have to work on it we have to become aware of it and pay attention to it that is what is required ultimately so right now much of the conduct outside may be indefinite right now we may be focusing on the problems outside so we may have assumed many things but if we can focus on the knowing part if we can focus on the right understanding if we can pay attention to our natural acceptance and start that effort of bringing all our feelings and thoughts in line with the natural acceptance all our acceptances in line with the natural acceptance then we can work towards the resolution of the problem rather than trying to find patchy small answers here and there for trying to correct the problem so problems will be many but can we have one solution which can take care of all problems that one solution can come through right understanding the all encompassing solution through knowing and for things outside to change on a larger scale this is why it is important to bring it into education so that this transformation that we try to work on in ourselves within us can be multiplied and ultimately every individual has this possibility or this um opportunity to work towards that so that we can have that entire societal transformation that we talked of for okay. us we can try to see that whatever activities we are doing correct 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 one was yesterday we were saying that in the at the base of those activities are we happy or unhappy within yes 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 and in addition to that we will see within today at the base yeah. of these activities that we are doing yeah. is my focus on the problem outside or is my focus on the solution where i can help with yes, the problem yes hmm hmm so this, that is it yeah so this we'll do for today uh, mm -hmm. as our homework or assignment yeah. and then we'll take your observations tomorrow